Okay, so we're going to start looking at, uh, we're going to look once again at cyclic force a little bit differently from a maybe a slightly different perspective. Okay, so, so let me first, uh, so first thing I'll do is I'll restrict myself to binary cyclic force. And then maybe later on we'll do non binary. Okay, let's keep uh, some part of the presentation simple. I'll do this. Okay. So, what's the cyclic code? So, if you look at the definition, okay, a linear code is uh, cyclic with the following condition is true. If you have C1, C2, Cn belonging to the code, that implies uh, so you can do it in so many different ways. So I'll, I'll do it in some particular way. Also belongs to the code. Okay, so this is the, the definition of a cyclic code. So basically, this is from here to here you go by a cyclic right shape. Okay, so that makes uh, the code cyclic. So I have designed it so that there is only one cyclic shift, but even if I take this code word and do a cyclic shift several times, say some 10 times or 20 times, I will still get another code word, because I, I can do it one step at a time and then I will get this, okay. Also I can do a cyclic left shift, okay, what happens if I do a cyclic left shift? A cyclic left shift is the same as n minus 1 right shift, so that is also covered. So everything is covered in this definition, that is perfect. So one, uh, one very easy way to construct cyclic codes is the following idea. Okay, so so let's say uh, some kind of a naive construction. Okay, so this is not very uh, this is not not this is not the way most people picture cyclic codes. But one way of doing the construction is to simply say, I will take a generator matrix. Okay. I'll take a first row. Okay, so let's say the first row is uh, G1. Okay, second row will be. Uh, so I need that. I need notation here. So let me just write R of G1. Okay, so I'll use this notation here. So if C is this. I'll call this as R of C. Okay, just to say say that this is a cyclic shape. So R of G1. R square G1, what is R square G1? Uh, rotate it cyclic uh, twice and then all the way down to n minus 1. Okay, so I could take my generator matrix to be of this form. No, 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 I want to do n minus 1. Okay, so <laughs> I know there is some k and all in there, I will come to it later. <coughs> okay, so I will take an arbitrary first row g1, I have not said any property for it, some arbitrary first row g1, and then keep cyclically shifting it to the right till I exhaust all the possible cyclic shifts. Okay, so I will put n here, but depends, I mean, sometimes you may not need all n. If you do not need all n to exhaust all the possible cyclic shifts, you can stop some other point, but otherwise you will have to do all the n. So the first claim is this will always generate the cyclic code. Okay, so that is not very hard to prove. Okay, so the code generated by this will be cyclic. So if you have one code word, it would have been generated by some message multiplying G. If you take a cyclic shift of that, right, all you have to do is cyclically shift the message also and you will get the code word. Okay, right? So this is obviously a cyclic code. Okay, so think about that a little bit if you are confused. Basically, you have, you have some message based set of message based multiplying this. Okay, so if you rotate a code word, you click shift by one. All I have to do is shift my message bits by one, and I get the corresponding shift in every place. Okay, so this is obviously cyclic. It's also obviously linear. So what is the difficulty here? What do you think is going to be a bit more painful to compute? Sorry. That is fine. So, but even before that, what are the parameters of the code that you are interested in? Block length is fine. 
Okay, so let's say it's n. What is the next parameter interested in? Dimension, right? So how do you do the dimension? You have to find the rank. Okay, and the rank might be something. It could be something less than n. Usually these things will be rank will be definitely less than n. Okay, when you do cyclic shift, there will be some linear dependency somewhere. Okay, so so what about k? It's not clear, but you have a good handle on k. Okay, and and it's also a very painful construction. If you want some uh, guaranteed minimum distance or anything like that, you don't know how to do it. There are so many other things which you don't know about this code. You just know it's cyclic. But then any advantage you hope for because of the cyclic nature is not really coming through in this construction. It's like this like well, constructing a generator matrix. You might as well do a non-cyclic one. What's the point in doing it cyclic if you're not using any major structure? Okay, so this is definitely a valid construction, but it doesn't tell you anything more about dimension, minimum distance, etc. Okay. So what's nicer is to view this uh, cyclic codes in this ring of polynomials, modular x bar n plus 1 like we did in class and then think of ideals and polynomials and all that and that gives you much nicer construction. It also tells you a lot more about k. Okay, so it turns out if you fix an n, you do not have cyclic codes for all possible k. So there are only some k for which cyclic codes are possible. Okay, so these are highly non-trivial results. If you, if you just start with this construction, how do you go about proving some result like that? You may not even be able to convince anybody of that. Okay. On the other hand, the way we will do it, we will be able to quickly find out for what k will an nk cyclic code exist. Okay. So, and how do you how do you think about constructing it? What are easy ways of doing it? Etc. All that will be clear. Okay. So, well, this is a very intuitive and simple construction. It's not very informative. What we will do is a little bit more complicated, but it will give you all the information you want. Okay. So, what is this idea of uh, ring? So the first idea is uh, is to use this ring, which I will denote as Rn. Okay, so basically Rn contains binary polynomials of degree. less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay, so this is the binary polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus 1. Addition and multiplication, I am going to do modulo x power n plus 1. Okay, so that is the, that is this ring Rn. Okay, so addition doing modulo x power n plus 1 is uh, okay, I mean it does not really affect anything, but multiplication modulo x power n plus 1 really will affect the multiplication. Okay, so it is not the normal polynomial multiplications, a lot of things will change and anything that crosses x bar n will fold back. Okay. So one nice thing about this ring is a cyclic right shift is represented by multiplication by x n r. Okay, so that is the nicest thing about this ring. Okay. And of course this ring also so, so this ring is also a rep, uh, also represents the binary vector space, n-dimensional vector space, right? There's nothing. Uh, there's no problem there. It definitely represents the okay, the n-dimensional binary vector space. How do I think of it as the n-dimensional binary vector space? Yeah, simply take the coefficients a zero, a one that becomes an n-dimensional binary vector space. I don't have to worry about polynomials. One nice thing about moving to polynomials is that you have a nice kind of mathematical description for what a cyclic right shift is. Okay, so it is basically a multiplication by x in R. Okay. So, so that is the that is the first idea. The next idea that we saw which is again very useful is, is uh, what happens to a cyclic code. A cyclic code becomes an ideal in R. So I define the ideal for you. So let me define that once again here. Okay, an ideal of R n of any ring. Okay, so ideal of the ring R okay. So a subset. Okay, so first of all it has to be a subspace. So let me say a subspace. Uh, set to 
be an ideal if let me say subspace i of r okay so let me be careful about subspace here is an ideal the following conditions are satisfied first condition is i is an additive subgroup okay what do i mean by additive subgroup okay a ring can ring with respect to its addition operation is a group okay it's an abelian group and uh, and this ideal that we look at the subset that we look at should be a subgroup of that additive subgroup okay so in particular in rn in rn the binary vector space itself is the additive group okay the additive group is the binary vector space so i can think of the subgroup as a subspace okay in rn i can say i has to be a subspace so basically if you have an i if you want an ideal in rn it should first of all be a linear code only linear codes are candidates for ideals okay so after that there is another definition which is again very important which will bring in the multiplication okay so if you have some o of x in r and b of x in i then at the close o of x times b of x belongs to i okay so if you take any polynomial in the ideal and any other polynomial anywhere in the ring multiply the two together you should still be in the ideal okay so those are that what's the definition of an ideal and and it seems doesn't seem very obvious why an ideal should be a cyclic code and in rn it's, it's it's quite easy okay so in rn okay so if you go to rn okay, one will imply i is a linear cross code is what okay so if you take any polynomial in rn okay so so i put afx here so i think i should not put afx here really you know i don't know what these rings are okay it's just a b oh. it's just a b right so in 2 everything is a polynomial in, in rn everything is a polynomial okay so what does 2 mean okay so you have a polynomial in the ideal Okay, and you can take any polynomial in R. Okay, so I, in particular, I'll choose a basis set of polynomials. Once I choose a basis set of polynomials, since I know already I is a linear block code, I can add up all of them. Right, it's closed under addition also, so I can I can add up all of them and replace this arbitrary element of R with only the basis elements. Okay, if I have the basis polynomials satisfying this property, that's enough. Okay, so two basically will reduce to b of x and I. In place, x power i times b of x is an i for well i equals one to n minus. Okay, i equals zero is kind of trivial. B of x is again is an i, so it's enough if you have this property. X power i times b of x should also be in the ideal. That's enough. So once you have that, the the entire two is satisfied. Yes, because any arbitrary polynomial in R R n can be written as summation a i x bar i so that's that's good enough okay so it works out so that's the that's the main idea so you notice that this is basically nothing but cyclic code okay so this makes i a cyclic code okay so it's quite uh, easy that way you don't have to uh, spell too hard to to show these properties so an ideal in r n is basically a cyclic code that we are looking for Okay, so let's take a couple of examples. Okay, so I'm going to start. With. I'm sorry. Yeah, actually, x b x is also enough. Okay, so so yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's also easy to see why x b x is enough. Right? So if x b x is an i, then you use the same property over and over again. You get x bar i b of x. Right? I don't have to. I put this out explicitly just to say. So yeah. So X x times three x x is i is also enough. Because when you use use the same property over and over again, you get x bar x. So it's not enough. Okay. So let let's uh, look at the uh, let's look at uh, 
from uh, uh, let's say our fourth. Okay, so our fourth is going to be zero one x one plus x. Okay, so we have to start writing out all these polynomials. It's a little bit uh, it's not, not a very boring exercise. And then you'll have x bar 3, x bar 3 plus 1. I'm sorry? x bar plus x. So, x bar 3 plus x, x bar 3 plus x plus 1. So we'll have 16 polynomials in R4 and there they are. Okay. So suppose I ask you to identify ideals. Okay. So I've said that okay, fine, ideals in RL are cyclic course. And I was promising you a simple way of coming up with cyclic course. But then, where is R4? Can you identify the ideals? Can you spot any ideal very quickly? Okay. So it's, I mean, the entire R4 will be an ideal. Okay. Fine. Okay, so R4 itself is an ideal. Anything else? For instance, 0 is an ideal. Okay. These two things are trivial. Okay, so we will not consider these two as uh, non trivial ideals, it's just trivial ideals. Anything else? Yeah. So so you have you need you need some method to generate the idea. I guess you already know the answer, so maybe you are giving the answer to me, but you would ideally need some way of coming up with ideals. Okay, so one one very easy method to come up with ideals is to say set of all multiples of one element of R four. Okay, so that's called the ideal generated by an element. Okay, so that's one way of generating an ideal. Ideal generated by uh, some A of x R four. Okay, so, so so let me just not say R four. It's in general R n. Okay, so this is basically uh, we'll we'll denote this with this notation. Okay, and that is set of all a of x b of x such that b of x is in R n. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll come to that. I think I did some of these results last time, but anyway, I won't emphasize them, some of them here. Okay, so so this is one way to generate an ideal, and you can show quickly that this will be an ideal. Okay, you have to prove that this is an ideal. How do you prove it? You have to verify the two properties. First thing you have to verify that it's an additive subgroup. You add any any two multiples of a of x like this, you will again get. A of x times b1 of x plus b2 of x, and that again belongs to R, so it's closed under addition. That's not a problem. What about multiplication? So multiply any element of this A of x times A of this this guy with another element of R. What do I get? Once again, get another multiple of uh, A of x, right? So it becomes A of x into B of x. Do you see that? Is it okay? So you can do the other multiplication first. B1 of x times b2 of x. Reduce it modulo x bar n plus one. You'll get some other polynomial. So both of them are the same. Okay. So eventually you get the you get to a element of this idea. Okay, so this is one very nice way of generating ideals in a in in in, uh, in a ring. Okay, so in general these are these uh, so these ideals are called principal ideals. Okay, so these are called principal ideals. Okay. And uh, let's let's see some examples of principal ideals in R4. So, uh, if I take the idea generated by one, what will I get? Hmm? Yeah, I get R4, right? Is that clear? Does it seem okay? Ideal generated by one will be R4. What about any other element? Can I get ideal generated by any other element to be R4? Sorry.
can any other element polynomial that will ideal has to derive what do you mean by ideal <laughs> okay, think about this for a little while more. What else can give me R4? Factors of? So what do I need? So, so when if I, if, if, if what does it mean if I say AFX is R4? In particular, there is one element in R4 that needs to be a multiple of AFX. What is that element? 1, right. So if I have 1 being a multiple of AFX, that is enough. If I show that 1 belongs to this ideal, then entire R4 will be in the ideal. Is that okay? Right? That is the crucial element. That is an argument that is often used when you want to show uh, an ideal is, is the entire ring. Okay? All you have to show is the is some unit or 1 in this case belongs to the belongs to the ideal. Okay? So, can I have, when can I have OFX times BFX equals 1 modulo x bar n plus 1? Is it possible? Sorry? Sorry? AFX is x bar i. It's not divided. It's not divide is what we need or what? No, yes, think about it. Seems like a lot of interesting discussion is happening, so maybe I should wait for a while and resolve this. There is no GC, common GC between the current person and the other. What do you mean by no GC? The thing is like. GC is one. GC. Okay. Okay. So that seems like an interesting place to start. So he is suggesting GCD of OFX, x bar n plus 1 should be equal to 1. Okay. So that is a nice property that the GCD satisfies. Okay. GCD can also be written as a linear combination of the two polynomials. So it means if I have something like this, it implies there exist polynomials B of x and C of x such that such that what? A of x B of x plus C of x x bar n plus 1 equals 1. Okay. So, so if you do mod x bar n plus 1, it seems like you are going to 1. Okay. So it seems like a very valid idea. Can you give me an example of an AFX in R4? X. Okay. So, so what multiplied by X will give me 1? X bar n minus 1. So you take X times X bar 4, X bar 3, you will go to X bar 4, which is actually 1 modulo X bar 4 plus 1. Okay. So, so those things will come. So there are also other cases. So if, if you have something like so you cannot have any other GCD. So if it is x, x square plus x, for instance. So for so for example, x equals uh, four. What about this way? X times x plus one. This will not be R4. Okay, so it will be something contained in R4. So so these are I mean, you, you need a strict GCD. That's the thing. There are also other guys. I think and you can take any other power here. You'll get the you'll get that. And there are also other things. Okay. But you, it, irreducible is, uh, I mean, you will be careful if you say irreducible. If it is irreducible, it should not be a divisor of R4, of x bar and, uh, 4 plus 1. Okay. So, so that might that might work out. I mean, you, you might have something like x bar 3 plus x plus 1, which might work out. Okay. So, so, there are several guys which will give you the entire entire R4. That is some uh, this of general interest. I mean, it is not of great interest to us. I'm just ask me. Yes. Can I say that the ideal generated by any element will be equal to the ideal generated by the GCD of that element? Yeah, we will come to that. Okay. So the next question, kind of, uh, I mean, based on what he is asking, is to say, when can I say okay, so this is the question that you are asking, right? When can I say that AFX and BFX generate the same idea. Okay. So, so for that, so to answer all these questions, you need something to understand something more about the idea. Okay. So, 
right. So all these questions can be very easily answered if you understand something very basic about the idea. So so that's what we'll see next. So next result we'll see we'll talk about something known as a generator polynomial of an ideal or, gen, or some kind of a unique generator for an ideal which will fix all these things. Okay. So the problem here is the same ideal can be generated by multiple elements. Okay. And you have to find that element which is in some way unique to that ideal. Okay. Which will not generate something else that you don't want to generate. Okay, so then you can answer all these questions very very easily. Okay, so let's let's try and answer that question. That comes from the generator polynomial idea. Okay, so this notion of a generator polynomial. Important. If you have an ideal in R n, okay, we'll denote this by g of x. G of x is the okay. So I'm dealing with binary case here, so it's quite easy. G of x is the least degree polynomial in I. Okay, so that's called uh, that is something special. It's called the generator. Okay, so the least degree polynomial in I is the generator polynomial G of x. Okay, so it turns out. This will be in some ways unique. First thing you can show is there will be only one least degree i. Okay, so let's try and prove some properties for it. There are a lot of properties that the generator polynomial has, and uh, we'll see some very interesting results will come out of it. So, it, so this will this will basically fix once you understand the notion or role of a generator polynomial, it will fix all possible ideals in R4 or uh, any R. You can quickly generate all the ideals in R, and you'll know exactly what they are, what they can be, etc. Okay, so all these repetitive stuff, the different things generating the same ideal and all, all the confusion will go away if you always fix to the generator polynomial. Okay. So the properties, there are many properties. First one is it's unique. G of x is unique. Okay. So all these proofs will go back to this least degree assumption and the fact that you have an ideal. Okay. So how do you prove uniqueness? Uniqueness is typically proved by contradiction. Okay, suppose you have g of x and g prime of x. Okay, maybe g prime of x and g double prime of x being both two least degree polynomials in the same ideal i. Okay, so when you say two least degree, both of them should have equal degree. Right, if one is lesser than the other, then both of them cannot be least. Okay, so one, both of them have equal degree, and then both of them are in the ideal. Okay, so when you say equal degree in, the, in binary, what does it mean? The last term, the last of terms, last term is some x bar i. Same thing here, last term is x bar i. Now what happens if I do g prime plus g double prime? I'm sorry? So if you do g prime of x plus g double prime of x, I know it's it's still in the ideal and it has degree strictly less than i. Okay. So the only way it will work out is it has to be zero, in which case g prime and g double prime are equal. Okay, so you can quickly show that to work. Okay, so this 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 implies this equals zero, and that implies uh, this y. Okay, so that's the way to show that g of x is unique. Okay, so if somebody gives you a generator polynomial and says find out, uh, okay, sorry, so if somebody gives you an arbitrary element of R n and says find out something about the ideal generated by that, the first thing you should try to find out is the generator polynomial. Once you find the generator polynomial, it will be okay. So suppose somebody asks you a question, is it ideal generated by A of x, same as the ideal generated by B of x, how do you answer that? Find the generator polynomial for the ideal generated by A of x, find the generator, pol generator polynomial for the ideal generated by B of x. If both of them are the same, then they are the same ideal. Both of them are different, they cannot be the same. Okay, so it is unique to the ideal. Okay, the second property is that what? G of x will divide x bar n plus one. Mm, is there anything else that will come before this? I think. Uh, I think this is fine. So, so this really nails down every single ideal out there. 
Okay, you know every ideal has a generator polynomial, and I know that it has to divide x bar n plus one. So how do I nail down all the ideals? I start with x bar n plus one, find all its divisors. Okay, let's take one each one will generate an ideal. Okay, it will generate a polynomial for an ideal, and those are the only ideals there. Nothing else is there. Okay, any any other ideal I come up with should be equal to one of these things. Okay, so how do I show this? G of x divides x bar n plus one. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so basically, the proof is to say we divide x bar n plus one by g of x. Okay. So, what will happen when we do that? We will get a quotient, and we will get a remainder. The important argument here is this R of x has degree strictly less than. Degree of G of X, okay, and R of X belongs to the ideal. Why does R of X belong to the ideal? If you reduce this equation modulo X bar n plus one, you get R of X is Q of X times G of X. So if you do Q of X times G of X in R n, what will you get? Small R of X. Okay, so it has it belongs to I. It has degree strictly less than the least degree polynomial in I. So it should only be zero. It cannot be anything. Okay, so that that implies, uh, and R of x is in I. These things will imply R of x equals zero, and G of x divides x bar uh, on this one. Okay. So there is an even more, slightly more interesting property, which is uh, quite useful. If you have A of x in I. Implies k that exists m of x such that a of x equals m of x times g of x k <coughs> in f two x. Okay, so so of course when I so 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 if I don't add this. This thing, this statement is obvious. Okay, my I know my ideal is generated by. Okay, okay, no, no. Let, let me step back. Let me step back a little bit. Let me step back a little bit. Okay, so so let me let me do this more more carefully. So this this basically implies what I wanted to say. Okay, so from once this result is shown, this implies that I equals G of X. Is that okay? Every element of the ideal is actually a multiple of G of X. Not only in R n, it's a multiple in F two X itself. The third being modulo X bar n plus one, it's a multiple. Is that okay? You see that? So that's a little bit more special property. So far, all our multiplications have been modulo X plus one, X bar n plus one. So what I'm saying here is, every polynomial in the ideal, which is in R n. Okay, remember, it's a polynomial of degree less than or equal to n minus one. You can write it as some polynomial times g of x, and you don't have to do any modulo. Itself, it will be a degree less than or equal to n minus one polynomial, so that no modulo will be necessary. Okay, this is not very hard to show. Okay, once again, the proof is so. So, so this is this is what is important. Okay, generate a polynomial actually generates the entire ideal. Once I prove that, this is also immediate. So how do I prove this result? Once again, you have to divide a of x by g of x. Okay, and you know a of x has degree less than or equal to n minus one, and g of x also has degree less than or equal to n minus one. And when you divide, if a of x has degree greater, the remainder will have a certain degree, and you can upper bound the degree, and you will see really r of x again has to belong to i. There is nothing more uh, you can do beyond. Okay, so so you can again show by a very similar argument that this has to be. Okay. Think about this for a while. Maybe maybe there is some subtlety here. No, no, no. Only the least degree polynomial in the ideal divides the divides x bar n plus one. A of x may not be the least degree polynomial, so it may not necessarily divide. So only g of x divides. See, so far I started with an abstract ideal, right? I didn't say 
anything about what generates it. Okay, so it's some ideal in Rn. Okay, so what I've shown after these things is any ideal in Rn is generated by one polynomial which belongs to it. Okay, so previously we were starting with the definition of principal ideal as in all the multiples of a particular polynomial. Here I have shown that an arbitrary ideal is also principal and it is in fact generated by its generator polynomial which is a unique element in it and that is the least degree polynomial. Okay, do you have a question? So, we know that G of x is the least degree polynomial in the ideal okay. and we also know that every element in the ideal generates the entire ideal. No, no, that we do not know. How do you know that? No such statement has been proved. Every element in the ideal does not generate the entire idea. Okay, so, if you want, if you want a counter example for it, you take, you take the entire R4, you take the entire R4, it is an ideal, right? Not all elements generate the entire R4. Okay, you take x plus 1, it generates only a subset of R4. Okay. Every element in an ideal will not generate the entire ideal, all that is not true. Okay. G of x will generate the entire idea, yes, I am sorry. Okay. Oh man, <laughs> step back a little bit. <laughs> I mean, so, wait, wait, wait. A of x is an arbitrary element of the idea. It might divide x power n plus 1, it may not divide x power n plus 1, I do not know. If it divides, then? Why should that be true? See, okay, so I think you know, people are mixing up so many different things. See, in an ideal, if I have an element in an ideal, it does not mean that GCD of A of X comma X power N plus N should be equal to 1. There is no such condition. Okay, so maybe I should I should step back a little bit and give you some explicit examples of ideals in R4 and then maybe I should come to this. I just went a little bit faster, I think. Maybe I should step back a little bit. See, so this, this is not a property satisfied by every element. Okay. Only some elements satisfy. If they satisfy, then the ideal generated by it becomes equal to R4. All that is a completely different proposition. Okay. Now, forget about all that. I am starting with an arbitrary ideal in R. Okay. So I did all that. The reason why I did all that was just to point out that answering questions about ideals requires you to think a little bit. If you don't know anything about the generator polynomial, you just say, okay, what is going on? Is it A of X, B of X? If you ask question about whether the ideal generated by A of X is same as ideal generated by B of X. You have to do a lot of work. I mean, you have to think about what, what is happening and all that. Once you understand this generator polynomial stuff, everything will become easy, is what I said. Okay. So, so then I started with an arbitrary ideal in R. Okay. Now, in this ideal, there are polynomials. It is not necessary that all of these polynomials should either divide x power n plus one or not divide x power n plus one. I don't know. They might divide. They may not divide. I have no problems with that. Okay. It is not necessary. The GCD of the elements in this ideal with x power n plus 1 should be 1. That is also not needed. It is just an arbitrary ideal. The only thing that is needed here is any two polynomials in the ideal, if I add them, I should get another guy in the ideal. Any polynomial in this ideal, if I multiply it with any L, any polynomial from Rn, I should get another element in ideal itself. Those are the only two conditions that this ideal satisfies. Forget about all those example problems that I asked you with all these things. Those things do not apply anymore. Those are just to get the thinking going. Okay. So let's see. Let's see maybe some explicit examples. Sorry. I know my g of x divides every a of x belonging to y. After this proof, yes. No, even before this, because divide always by divide by. I always always have a reminder which is just in R and R. Yeah, in R and it's okay. Yeah. So in R and of x, I know g of x divides a of x. Well, I'm saying it's true in F two itself. Oh. How did you How did you get to R and of x? I did this. Hmm. If it is not, not true, then I always have, I can find the remainder which is not a dangerous one. Where will you divide by? Where will you divide? Dividing in F2 of X or Rn of X? What is the division in Rn of X? See, in Rn, this ideal has really no description. I have not told you how to how the ideal is generated or anything like that. No, so what I think is, G of X being the least degree polynomial line will automatically make division in Rn of X equal to the division in F2 of X for Whenever I divide the G of That is what I am saying in the last statement also. That is exactly what I said here. That is what I said in the proof also. So, since G of X is least degree, A of X will have degree greater. A of X also has degree less than or equal to n minus 1. So, when you do, do a division, 
you are not going to do x bar n plus 1 anywhere. Okay, so, it will not enter the picture at all. So, everything will be in F2x itself. So, that is why I said this multiplication property is true in G of f 2 of x. Okay. So, usually when I write i equals generated by g of x, I do not need that this is true. Okay. I do not need that the multiplication should be in f 2 x. Okay. It is enough if the multiplication is in R n. Okay. But I am saying here the generator polynomial is so special that not only does it have this property in R n, it also has the property in f 2 x. Okay. All right. So, so, so I think we should we really need to look at a few examples. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's look at a few examples. Okay. So, so I'm going to take in R four. Uh, let's say the ideal generated by x square x square plus one, just for fun. Okay. All right. So this will be what? So how do you come up with these elements? So every single multiple of x square plus 1, there are 16 different uh, guys there, so let us see how many different ones. 0 of course will be there, then you have 1, then you have x, okay, so x multiplied by this is x power 3 plus x, and then you have x plus 1, so what happens if you multiply by x plus 1, x power 3 plus x plus 1. And then what else will you have? What about x squared? Multiply by x squared, what will happen? You won't get anything more. Okay. So, so now you can check everything else, and I think you won't get anything else. You will get only these four bits. Okay. Yeah, I am going to come to it. Okay. So, here we got four guys. Let me ask a few more questions okay, just to just so that it is uh, working out. So, what is the GCD? So, if you have A of X and I, what is GCD of A of X comma X power 4 plus 1? No, no, X power 4 plus 1. So, for different a of x, if a of x is 0, then gcd is not a proper definition, forget about it. If a of x is x square plus 1, what is the gcd? x square plus 1 itself, x square 3 plus x, x square plus 1. If it is x square 3 plus x square plus x plus 1, what about gcd of this and this? It should be this guy, right? X square 3 plus x square plus x plus 1. Because x square 4 plus 1 also factors as x plus 1 times this guy. So, you will get this GCD. Okay, so that's what to answer the question that GCD of A of x with x square 4 plus 1 can be anything. It's really very hard to control. Okay, so that's wrong. Then, is there any other element of ideal which will generate the same ideal? Okay, so first thing I want to point out is if you take A of x in this ideal, what will be this? The ideal generated by A of x. Okay. It will be some other ideal, but can I say anything more precise about it? It will be contained in I itself. Okay. Right? It cannot go outside of I. So, so, so if I take x square plus 1, I get the entire ideal. If I take x, x power 3 plus x, what will I get? You will get the entire one. What will happen if I take x power 3 plus x square plus x plus 1? You will get only two guys. You will get 0 and that. You will not get anything else. Okay, so you can check these things, all these things you have to check. Okay, so you can check the ideal generated by x power 3 plus x is also equal to the same i. Okay, I am using this i, I think the confusion is sometimes I use i inside the example, sometimes I use a general ideal i outside. So you, sh you should remember that when I say an ideal outside of the example, it is a general ideal, it is not something generated by x power plus 1 is r4. Okay, so remember that. This is i, but what will be x power 3 plus x square plus x plus 1, this will just have two guys, 0 and x square 3 plus x square plus x plus 1. You can, you can test it out. It is a bit more of, bit more of work, but you can figure out uh, what. Okay. 
right? Okay. So let me make one more statement now. So, if, if, um, so let, maybe maybe I should see. Should, should we look at one more example? Maybe we should look at one more example. Okay. So uh, once again in R four, let's try and look at the ideal generated by. Uh, let me take a simple example. Maybe it's part three. Okay. So let's try that. Okay. Should I do this? Let's try. Okay, so let us just see what happens. So you will have zero x bar three plus one. What happens when I multiply this with x? X. X plus one, right? You get x plus one. Okay. And what happens if I multiply by x plus one? Okay. Good. Okay. And then x squared. X squared plus x. And x squared plus one. Okay. And then you'll have x squared plus x plus one. What will you get for that? Yeah, it will be x squared plus. No, no, you get that x squared plus x. Okay, so you won't get anything more. Is that okay? You will get x squared plus x again. Okay. And then, if you multiply by x bar three, okay, what will you get? X bar three plus x squared. Okay. Okay. And then multiply by x bar three plus one. What will you get? I'm sorry, x squared plus one, right? Okay, and that's it. I think that is it. You won't have anything more. Okay, so you can check that. You'll have eight elements. You won't have anything else. Right? See, the first thing is an ideal in R n is a linear block code, which already means. That the number of elements in it will be a power of two. Okay, so if you have 16 elements in the ring, it doesn't matter. If you multiply by 16, the ideal generated by anything will either have size one or or two or four or eight or 16. It cannot be anything else in between. Okay, so once you cross four, you know it has to start at eight. It cannot be the entire thing because x bar three plus one has a has a common divisor with x bar four plus one. So it has to start at eight. And once it comes to eight, you can stop. You don't have to do any more work. Everything else will appear. Okay. So now you can try to ask the same question: Which of these other elements generate the same ideal? Which generates the sub ideal? You can try to list out all the things. So you'll get all kinds of different ideals depending on which polynomial. Okay. Alright. So the next question: I'm going to. Let, so now we're done with examples. We're going to go to general, general idea. Suppose I look at an ideal generated by some A of x. And say a of x divides x bar n plus one. Okay. So let's look at this situation. A kind of a different situation. Usually, I said I have an ideal. I don't know anything about it. We know that we can define a generated polynomial. It's generated by the minimal degree polynomial there, and all that is fine. So that's fine. So now suppose I say I start with the divisor of x bar n plus one and look at the ideal generated by it. Okay. What can I say? Can I say anything about the generator? What will be the generator for now? Can I say b equal to f x? Or maybe it's some divisor of f x. How do you how do you prove a result like this? Okay, 
if you do modulo x bar n plus 1 no can it not come back and become a that's cool that, that's not that's not what i mean when i say this when i say this i don't mean multiple in f2 alone of course if i multiply only in f2 then there is no no case to be made the cpu is under the polynomial but i am not said anything about f2 i am going to multiply this with arbitrary degree polynomials Okay. Then that is why J of x, and it will have a larger uh, length of coverage, which means J of x will not uh, generate the entire idea. Could be fine, no? I have no problems with that. Here, I, I is supposed to be generated by J of x. Yes. So if I have a generator of J of x which divides J of x, mm -hmm. then the ideal J of x generates will be larger than the ideal. J of That's okay. As long as J of x is a multiple of J of x and R n. That's okay. Now, see what I have to show is no. Not is the IFX is not least degree. GFX is least degree. Hmm. Hmm. That's okay. Now, I I never said IFX is the least degree for me. Why should both of them do it? IFX is not the best. Yes, so, because the G is divided, the G will generate a bigger I. But no, no, no. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. That how can you say it will be generating a bigger I? So don't, don't just assume that very quickly. I mean, you have to prove that. I mean, you are not wrong. Simple is right, but that needs proof. That's my only point. What you have to show is you cannot get a divisor of x bar n plus one, which is lesser degree than a of x, as a multiple of a of x and R n. Okay, you have to show that. Okay, think about. If you want to show that or not, anyway, I think we are running out of time. We'll stop here. But that's the property that we have to show. This is true. Actually, generator is equal to f x. You have to show that. That requires proving. Okay, so it's not a immediate fact. It will be very obvious to you. So you are so used to the integers. N plus one. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you have to show like that. Okay, so there's a way to show that it cannot happen. Okay, so so you you have to, I mean, so you have to go from R n to F two, and there you have to use arguments like what he said just now. Okay, so to argue that it has to be that way, and then from there you can argue. Something. All right, so we'll come to it. Well, F x divides x bar n plus one is a powerful requirement. I'll prove this in next class. Okay, so explicitly, and then we'll pick up something.